All right. So this is a question on the second assignment. Um, doesn't even matter, right? I think it's number five. <clears throat> I want you to be able to read it and you know know what situation you have. On a planet far, far away from Earth. IQ of the ruling species is normally distributed. Obviously, it has to be if we're going to use the methods that we have here. Um, with a mean of 109 and a standard deviation okay, of 18. So, let me stop there. The species, they have IQ scores, and the mean of the IQ scores is 109, and the standard deviation is 18. So, I'm converting what they're giving me into my notation because I'm going to need that. Right? And I'm using um, population notation, right? Population mean and population standard deviation because it's the, the total species, right? It's all species. This is the average of the population and the standard deviation of the population. So we're normally distributed with the mean and the standard deviation. So automatically, because the mean is not zero and the standard deviation is not one, um, and that has to be true, the mean has to be zero and the standard deviation one to be on a standard normal distribution curve. I'm not on a standard normal distribution curve. Um, suppose one individual is randomly chosen. This is important because later you might choose more than one. I think it's next week you do the central limit theorem. Let X be an IQ of that individual this is important because you're going to have a lot of these questions next week or when you get into the central limit theorem. Um, what is the distribution of X? X represents an IQ. That's what they tell me. An IQ of the individual on this planet far, far away from Earth. And distribution is always, so when you see this kind of thing, it's basically asking you what the mean and standard deviation is. So X <clears throat> comes from, <coughs> excuse me, a normally distribution or a normal distribution situation where the mean is 109. Can I fit that here? 109 and the standard deviation is 18. That's all that that is asking you. And for now, it's directly given to you in the problem. Now, I want you guys to help me with this. Find the probability that a randomly selected person's IQ is over 115. So they asked me for probability. Well, does that mean they gave me, what, is, what does that mean? Did they give me the area or do they want the area? This I want you guys to answer. Do they want the area or do they give me the area? They want Find the probability, right? So what does that mean? And you could do it in the chat, or you could say it out loud. It doesn't matter to me. So if they want the probability, take a guess. You see? Yes. If they want the probability, they want the area. Yes. They want the area. So I'm going to draw this curve. Just so I visualize, normally distributed. The middle of this curve is the mean, which is 109. 115 is to the right of that. And which side um, do they want? Which area do they want? Do they, do they want the area to the right of 115? Or do they want the area to the left of it? To the right. To the to the right, because over, right? To the right. So this is the area that we want. All right, cool. I know that I want the area. And if I use my notation, this is what it would look like. The probability that I randomly select an X and it's bigger than 115. Because they could say it in words or they could say it in the notation. What do I use? Do I look for normal CDF or do I look for inverse norm if I want the area? Normal CDF. Yes. Anytime I want the area, it's normal CDF. Oops. So let me go. Second bars. Oops, let's get out of here. Second bars. We're going to go to normal CDF like you told me. All right, you guys tell me now. What's my lower bound? 
what's the lower bound of this area that I want? You could type it, you could say it. No, nine. And the low, well, I put the, the middle here always as the mean, but the oh. lower bound of this shaded region is 115. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. My upper bound, what's my upper bound? Yes, yeah, you. What's my upper bound? What's the area on the right hand side and the upper side for the shaded region? Infinity. Infinity, and we'd be representing, we'd be representing, we represent that as one with this E and then 99. Or, you know, look, you could also put a, just a huge positive number. Sometimes I just do that because of the fact that, like, when I get really, really deep into the tail, as long as it's a huge number, it should be fine. I'll actually show you both. <clears throat> My mean, what they give it to me as. 109 and my standard deviation was 18 which is also here mean standard deviation okay let's paste it 0.36 point well hold on what did i get um did i get a probability or did i get a z score how should i round that should i typically round it to four should i take it as a data value as an iq score what did i just get Point three six. I'm going to take, so remember, probability, yeah. This was a probability, right? We wanted probability. And typically, when we do probability, we take four. Obviously, pay attention to how they want you to round, but typically, we take four digits to the right of the decimal. Three, six, nine, four. Zero point three, six, nine, four. I'll fill this in after for your notes. <clears throat> now, it doesn't ask me, and then it says four digits four decimal places. It doesn't ask me for probability as a percentage, so we're going to leave it that way. But 36.94% of um, these IQ scores on this planet are bigger than 115. Okay. So, again, same planet, <laughs> far, far away from Earth, um, which obviously I guess they're a little... Um, they're supposed to be a little more intelligent than us, I guess. No? A school offers special services for all children in the bottom 2% for IQ scores. What is the highest IQ score a child can have and still receive special services? Okay, so let me ask you this. Well, first of all, let me draw my curve. This is a normal distribution curve. The center of this curve is 109. This is what I do naturally just because it's easier to visualize. These are the IQ scores from this other planet. Okay, now, um, I see this here. I want you to tell me if I want an area or, you know, if I know the area. Do I want the area or do I know the area? You know the area. I know the area and I know it because they give me a percentage. Percentage is area. Bottom 2%, bottom 2% is gonna be over here on the bottom end. So they give me this area, 2%, which is 0 0.02. I know the area, let me come over here. I know the area and the area is all the way in the left tail because it's bottom 2%. And let's call this X. This is a number that I don't know. <clears throat> what is this IQ score that has 2% less than that? Um, so what do I need to use? Do I do uh, inverse norm or do I use uh, normal CDF for this one. I know the area. That's inverse norm. Inverse norm. I'm going to go inverse norm. Now, the area is already to the left, so I'll go point zero two. Let me go straight to this. Second bars, inverse norm. Area is point zero two. The mean, I forgot what is it. Oh, right here, 109. And the standard deviation was right here, 18. <clears throat> and it's area to the left, which even if I don't have this, is still same. And I get, no, it says round to two decimal places, but what did I get? I got an IQ score, 72.03. So 
So <clears throat> this is, I think, <clears throat> I don't know what's happening here in my voice. <laughs> This is, I think, what happens sometimes when you read these type of problems because it says that it's the bottom 2% and then they ask you for the highest IQ score. So I think just the words may confuse people sometimes because it says bottom and then it says highest. But if you think about it, this is the bottom 2%. What it's saying is what is the highest value? What's this thing here that has 2% below it? Because this would be the highest IQ score that you can have to receive these special services because it's still technically in the bottom 2%, but it's the higher end of that. Does that make sense? So don't let the, the two, you know, bottom versus like highest, don't let that mess you up or, you know, confuse you. Okay. I always get questions on this one every semester. Um, let me make sure you guys are cool. You, you good so far with everything? Okay. <clears throat> All right. Back in the good old days, <laughs> we talked about quartiles. I don't think it was that far along, far away. Um, what does Q1 represent? I forgot. Q1 is um, what percentile? Do you remember? First quartile, Q1. I'm looking at the chat too. Do you remember? 25th percentile. So basically, finding the interquartile range, right, is the same thing as Q3 minus Q1, which is why they're asking you for Q1 and Q3. Now that you know. Q1 as the 25th percentile, what is the Q3 then? The 50th or middle, whatever, median. <laughs> well, Q2 is the, the middle or the median. Q3 oh, was the... Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> you, it's okay. The 75th. 75th. But that's good. We review it, right? Q, um, Q2 was the 50th or the median, which she said, 50th percentile. Q3 was the 75th percentile. So I'll draw them down here. I'll do it. I'll do two curves, one of them for Q1. I don't necessarily need two curves, but I'll do it. Normal distribution, the center was 109. These are IQ scores. I mean, with practice, you get used to this. You don't have to draw the curve every time, but I'm drawing it for you guys for your notes just so you can see it visually what's happening. So IQ scores on my pink one, I'm going to do my 25th percentile or Q1. And then here I'll do my Q3 from my green. So and that's going to give me my interquartile range. Yeah. So <clears throat> Q1 is the 25th percentile. OK, I'm going to ask you this. If I want the 25th percentile, does that mean that I know the area or do I want the area? Do I know the area or do I want the area? Okay, yes, know the area. And the reason that she said know the area, we know the area, is because we know the percentage. We know the percentage. The 25th percentile has 25% below it, and the 75th percentile has 75% below it. We're given percentage, so we know the area. So for the Q1, the 25th percentile, Remember, the middle of this curve is 109 because the mean is 109. Would I expect the 25th percentile to, to have an IQ score less than 109 or greater than 109? 
where should I put this area, 25th percentile? Would I, would I expect less than? Less than, yeah. Yeah, I, this, this over here, I'm gonna put Q1 here. I would expect it to be less than 109 because 25% is less than that. And 109 is the middle or the median, right? Because on a normal distribution curve, the median is the same as the mean, which is the same as the mode and the blah, blah, blah. This would be Q2. Well, they don't ask me for Q2, but if I wanted to. Okay, so I would expect it to be less. So now, cool, I have the area. I'm gonna go inverse norm, right? Let's go straight to my calculator. Second bars, inverse norm, because I know the area. And the area I put here is 0 0.25, because it's the 25th percentile. I already have the mean 109, standard deviation 18. It's still left in the left tail. And boom, 96 point. And then we're rounding to, I'm assuming, two decimal places. This is an IQ score, 96.86. Let's put that here. 96.86 is my Q1, my, my 25th percentile. So 25% of the IQ scores are less than 96. Um, okay, let's find Q3. Q1 inverse norm, 96. I'm gonna just add this later, okay. Um, Q1, Q1, okay, Q3, Q3, 75th percentile, would I expect the 75th percentile to be greater than the 109 or less than the 109? Seventy fifth percentile. So seventy fifth percentile. So one oh nine is like the fiftieth percentile, and seventy five percent is bigger. So seventy five percent has to be less than this value. So Q three is here to the right. I would expect the third quartile to be bigger than one oh nine because seventy five percent is below it. So I have the area to the left again, inverse norm. I'll fill that in after. If I go second bars, inverse norm, this is 0.75. Everything else is already in here. Left, right, area to the left, and boom, 121.14. So my Q3, uh, my 75th percentile is 121.14. I expected it to be a little bigger than the center. But then now this is easy. Because all I have to do is go Q3 minus Q1 to get my interquartile range, which I'll do on here, 121.14 minus 96.86. And I'll get 24.28. Now, you know, uh, this question asked for the interquartile range. Technically, they didn't have to ask you. I think you have to input Q1 and Q3 and then the IQR. But technically, if they ask for the interquartile range, you don't necessarily have to be asked for Q1 and Q3. It's assumed that you have to find Q1 and Q3 because otherwise you can't find the interquartile range, right? But this is a, a hidden way of giving you the area, right? So if you're given a percentage or you're given a probability, you want a value inverse norm. If you want a probability, which means you would want an area, then you do normal CDS. And so that's basically it. Obviously you can have different word problems and such, but at the end of the day, that is the foundation. So you just have to figure out, you know, which it is and then obviously where on your curve. So let me stop this. Um, okay, cool. So <laughs> obviously there are other word problems I could do, but 75th percentile, probability of spending. Yep. So all of this is like, what is the Z score for a patient? Yeah. So there's one more thing on. So tomorrow I could do some of these word problems, um, or more word problems, I should say. And I didn't necessarily, um, convert a value to a Z score yet. I might do something related to that tomorrow too. I think you have that on one of your problems. Question six, 
of the second thing because it asks for what is the z-score for a patient that so <clears throat> with any of these you know situations that are not um, standardized we could take that particular value and put it on a standard normal curve so you know the q1 the 25th percentile is a, is an iq score but i could find a z-score that corresponds to that which is literally just you know this formula here but um i get i'm gonna Maybe I'll do something with that tomorrow. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to ask if you guys are cool or you have any other questions. And then tomorrow I'll just add to it. So what do you think? How do you feel about this stuff? Are we Much better. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. <laughs> Not as bad as you thought, right? Not as bad, yeah. <laughs> okay, good. And then, you know, like you, I would say to draw, draw the, um, you know, draw the, the curves, because it helps visualize, right? But as, as you practice more and more, you probably won't draw them anymore. But yeah. So do you guys have any questions before I sign off? Same time tomorrow. <laughs> Same time tomorrow. <laughs> yep. Same time tomorrow. I'll be on. Yep. And then if you have any particular questions, you can look at your, you know, assignments and then get an idea and be like, all right, I do need more of this help and this help. But I'll probably, like I said, I'm gonna probably do question six tomorrow and maybe I can add some more random stuff that I make up or whatever, just to practice like now, determining what's given versus what you want and then where it is. You know what I mean? So, okay. I'll set up these little, I'll organize these recordings because right now they're not organized. And then I'll post it all in here, okay? Notes and such, all right? So um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye, thank you. Thank you.